Uh, let's see here. Um, right, a uh, quick little bit of background. Uh, I'm on team Levon Kadipu. Um, we were the primary host of Puzzle Hunt 14, uh, which uh, was simulcast in the Bay Area by uh, Dan Egnor and uh, the demonic robot Tyrannosaurus. I think that's a portmanteau of various team names put together there. Um, I have also hosted uh, Snap 4, which was the zombie-based Snap, and that one was also uh, recasted in the Bay Area by, um, I don't remember who rehosted that. Uh, Larry Hoskin and uh, some people he put together. Uh, both of our simulcasts were made up of just conglomerates of pieces of teams. They weren't. Uh, Golden Golems and Mystic Fish, that sounds right. Uh, so uh, you can see some information about me. It's not really that important. Uh, Quick note to say thanks to uh, Dan and the DRTs for their help with our recast. Uh, and they sent me some comments for this talk, too, which really helped. OK, uh, quick note that a puzzle hunt is not a game. So uh, a lot of the things that apply to a game may not apply here. We don't have as much or any location wrangling to do uh, with, a, with a puzzle hunt. Uh, the puzzle content tends to be more important, whereas in a game, sometimes uh, experiences mean a lot in the game. They can be as important as puzzles, whereas experiences are not so important. Uh, they tend not to be as important with puzzle hunts, although not always the case. Uh, and we have a much larger team count. Uh, in Seattle, I think we were like 83 or 84 teams when all was said and done. Uh, so you're going to have less emphasis on artifacts. Uh, maybe you make a couple of copies that are shared among all the teams in a central location, or uh, something that's very low cost to do uh, for everybody. Tends to focus a lot more on uh, paper style puzzles. OK, uh, finding a simulcast team, uh, other people have talked about this as well. And we had uh, no more kind of centralized luck. We just talked to different people, and they pointed us at people who were said they weren't interested. But those people pointed us to people who were interested. Um, so you know, just uh, I'd say pimp your contacts, whoever you know. Uh, we've got, uh, if I was doing it now, I would definitely have a better idea of who to talk to. Uh, and the Facebook page that we have uh, for Seattle is getting a little bit more popular. So I think that's probably a good resource nowadays. Um, it's much easier to do when you've announced that you're doing something. It's hard if you're trying to develop it in secret, you know, that if it falls apart, you don't have to, you don't have to bow out or back up. Uh, but it's harder to find a simulcast team if that's what you're interested in. And, and uh, like other teams have said, uh, it's good to be able to bribe them with getting to play your event first. Um, it does mean that they have a, uh, they don't get to start as early uh, because they have to, uh, I put this, they, they, they have to stay behind the veil of secrecy until they've uh, done your beta test. Uh, for us anyways, the, the DRTs were definitely our most solid beta team. We were really lucky to have them. Uh, without them, we would have had a lot more trouble um, We'd have had a lot less confidence uh, because all the beta teams we could find locally up here uh, weren't as experienced puzzlers. Uh, find the right way to say that. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say on that topic. Uh, they were the first beta team and the only beta team to ever solve the Quintetrahedronicon, the big, if you played in the event, the big thing that you built up out of uh, wooden stirrer sticks. Um, so uh, why it can be hard to be a simulcast team, uh, this was commented on before, and I think it also applied in the last talk, that uh, it's mostly just the crap work, and you don't get to do any of the fun part of it. Uh, for me, fun is the writing the puzzles, and having people experience your puzzles is what's fun for me, and the crap is all the other stuff that you have to do to make something fly. Uh, location wrangling, logistics, which includes, for us anyways, it was you know signups and service setup and uh, courting people, make sure you had staff. Uh, and then uh, for a simulcast team, you have to depend on a completely different set of people who are busy trying to launch their own event in some cases uh, to get the stuff that you need to run your event, which is probably very annoying for them. Um, and then uh, the day of the event as well. Uh, I think the DRTs probably had, I think they, they, their plan was to have like one person, like each puzzle was understood by someone on their team, but not multiple people necessarily. Uh, and that makes a uh, day of support a lot harder, I think. Uh, how to communicate. Uh, we stored all, all of our content on uh, Dropbox. That was really convenient for us, and I think it was good for uh, the other guys. They were just able to kind of poke around in our folders and see what, they, see what we had if we weren't uh, being overly communicative with them. Uh, this is probably pretty obvious, but having a separate email list for the different teams, because on our email list we were talking a lot about things that were specific to the Seattle one. And then just having a couple of people on each team. I guess it was just one way for us. We 
I, I and then maybe one or two other people were on their mailing list for their event. Um, make attempts to uh, address the concerns of the remote team. One of them that uh, was probably the biggest sticking point and the hardest was that our uh, tech was super late on it, um, certainly partially to blame for that. Uh, and uh, it makes your remote team very nervous when they don't have a server or any way to sign teams up or puzzles or uh, any real confidence that they're going to be able to run the event. Uh, and uh, an interesting note that you should uh, not just pay attention or communicate with them before the event, but also while the event is running. It's really good to uh, have a strong point of contact. At some point, I wasn't paying attention to my email. And they got into contact with us somehow, but they'd found a bug in one of our puzzles. So uh, that was really helpful. They found, I think, two bugs in our puzzles, actually, that we had to rub day of. So that before any of the CL teams found them somehow. Uh, so uh, content, uh, certainly for Puzzle Hunt, and I think it's true for a game as well. Content is like the, the most important thing you've got. Uh, uh, that's where all the work comes from. And uh, I think having really good process can help uh, provide good content. Uh, what we did was we had uh, various stages that our puzzles would go through, and in order to get into kind of the final ready-to-go stage, uh, you had to have a tech review, and uh, the tech review is kind of, if you imagine the play test as being, I uh, use the software term, black box testing, then the tech review is sort of white box testing for the, uh, for the puzzle, where they go through and they verify as many of the clues as they can, or if there's something that's important, they're going to go look it up on Wikipedia and make sure that it's correct and that there isn't bad or duplicate information out there. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that goes on there. Uh, one of the important inputs into that step is an answer sheet that explains exactly how the puzzle process works. Usually, you know, says these are what the answers are and here's how the whole mechanic works. Uh, and that turned out to be really handy for the event as well because we were just able to take those and feed those right in as our answer sheets to the uh, final event. Uh, portability, Scott talked a lot about this actually. Uh, it's a big issue for simulcasts. Uh, for us, it was helpful that we didn't have this many location-specific puzzles. Um, it was usually flavor and not uh, integrated. They didn't have anything to do with the location itself. We weren't using pictures on the wall or something. We had a puzzle that was uh, a piece of art, and it was just put in a place where there was other art. There wasn't anything about the other art that was necessary, for example. Um, the DRTs decided kind of early on to go with having their hunt be in, uh, completely remote, meaning uh, people were able to play from wherever they wanted. I don't know if they actually had people outside the Bay Area playing, but they could. Uh, that meant that they couldn't do some of our puzzles. We had a connect-based puzzle that uh, they didn't get to see, and uh, the puzzle where you had to run a nickel around on a board that had a bunch of pennies glued on it, they couldn't do that one, obviously. Uh, and then there were some puzzles that we had where uh, they, they had to modify or just replace the location with, here's what you would have seen if you had gone to this place. Um, and uh, some puzzles might have had specific or intermediate answers. So this is kind of a general concern that you have of if you have a puzzle that solves to now go to conference room such and such in this building, that's not going to work for the Bay Area. I think they had a disclaimer. It's like, if you run across something like this, don't try and go somewhere. Just contact us instead. Uh, and it's important to communicate requirements. I don't know if we were really successful with this, but uh, one of our puzzles required you having a Ticket to Ride game, uh, a copy of the Ticket to Ride game. Uh, and so you should make sure that the other team is aware of that and communicates it to their team, uh, their teams, and uh, software prerequisites. I think we had, uh, sorry? I thought you were going to say yarn. Yarn, oh. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a good thing. Uh, tech issues. So uh, the hunt is kind of different in that there's, uh, you know, generally a central server where everyone goes to submit their answers. You don't do them by phone, uh, for puzzle hunts anyways. Uh, Mr. Hunt works a little differently. Um, one of the things that we did early on was because our event had kind of a long lead time, we were developing it while other events were running in Seattle, the server that Puzzle Hunts were running on, we couldn't rely on for our beta test. We didn't want to put the information up on there ahead of time. So uh, having our betas already off-site kind of gave us confidence that we knew we could run multiple instances of it. Uh, and we kind of early on decided that we were going to make them set up their server more or less and be in control of their server. We weren't going to try and control hosting both instances. Uh, we were also a little worried about server load uh, at the time. Uh, the client app itself, the one that, uh, that you use, the Silverlight application, uh, we, it wasn't designed at first to be rehostable, but we had to go through and make a bunch of modifications. So if you're going to do it, you might want to think about upfront, don't hard code any URLs in there. That's really uh, obvious, I guess. 
um, you might have to, we had to do different builds so we could repoint our service references. Uh, that's kind of software specific stuff. Uh, and I didn't finish writing that line there. Puzzle content dropped totally. I don't know what that means. Uh, the hunt software, hmm? Oh, that's right. We dropped the entire uh, set of website content as a package. They just drug into their, the appropriate uh, folder on their website. So that was pretty uh, straightforward for them, I hope. Um, the hunt software itself didn't port completely. There are some pieces of it that are very Microsoft specific. They use like the user's Microsoft login uh, to do the registration. And so that's one thing that uh, we really didn't provide to, their, the, to our recast team at all. They kind of had to cobble it together was the registration. I think I made them a link where they could fill in the information for the teams and submit it so that day of the teams had the information in there, but they had to just do like email registration. Uh, and uh, it's a really good idea to not try and be working on the hunt software the night before the hunt, um, especially when you're like also trying to get it. <laughs> Mystery <laughs> hunt. <laughs> Mystery hunt was working on it during the hunt. Or were they, uh, we were definitely working on it a little bit during the hunt, but uh, it was you know the night before the hunt all the way up until the morning. And like I was looking over my emails when I was preparing for this, and there were emails from me communicating with them at like 7 a.m. Okay, so here's how you do this next step in setting up, and oh, you need to you know run this script. At one point, I was like, okay, just run this bare SQL command. It's going to work, I think, <laughs> maybe. And I was crossing fingers. Uh, oh, I'm nearly the end of my talk here. Uh, so I think the most important thing of all uh, when you're doing something like this is do you have to let go of your content. Um, the simulcast, if it's going to be successful, the, the team that's running it has to feel like they own the event. Uh, and that means that they have to be able to make changes that they want to make to your puzzles. Um, you know, uh, if there are puzzles they don't like or they don't think can work, they got to be able to. They have to have the freedom to remove them, uh, cut, repurpose, remodify them. You know, uh, I think we had the art puzzle that uh, Jonaby had written was like uh, drawings that she had made of different uh, albums that were all on like the top 100 uh, Billboard top 100 or something. And I seem to recall that the recast team didn't like some of those drawings and redrew them. Uh, she she, did, she took it very well, but you can imagine that uh, as a puzzle author, that might be kind of a blow to your self-esteem or something. So uh, kind of uh, being willing to give up control of your uh, content is going to be important, uh, I think. And, you know, they get to decide their own plan for hinting. Uh, oh, that's it. Right. Uh, content is the most important thing when you're doing something like this in summary. Uh, you need to think about portability. We had, for every puzzle we had in our kind of spreadsheet, we had uh, a, a field where we could list portability concerns. We went through each puzzle and said, does this puzzle have portability concerns? Okay, it's a CD puzzle. Okay, we're not going to give them CDs, so what are we going to do here? Okay, we'll make a website with a zip full of MP3s, and then they can get them that way, for example. Uh, that one had a problem because there was a, there was a cover page for the CD, I remember now. Uh, and we provided the MP3s, but there was no cover page. That was a really hard puzzle to solve without the cover page. <laughs> Nearly impossible. Um, and then uh, don't uh, hold on too hard to your uh, puzzles. Uh, that's it. That's all I've got. Uh, one thing I found particularly helpful um, in a couple of recast uh, experiences, including this one, was having a good, well-established single point of contact for communication between the teams. Um, in this case, it was basically you. I don't know if we ever sort of explicitly worked this out, but you know, it was mostly like I would email, you know, a rich at, you know, and uh, um, and it and you were sort of in a way our kind of advocate. Um, and that can be a lot more helpful than if there's just sort of, oh, email this mailing list and maybe somebody will reply or maybe two people will have two conversations and it'll be a problem. So I thought that worked really well. Uh, yeah, I kind of had designated myself actually as the as the the person who was in charge of making the recast or, you know, uh, at first at least being the person who was like, I want this event to be recast and everyone else was kind of like, well, that's P2, you know, probably, probably two for us. It's not like the most important thing, which I think it has to be the case when you're doing an event like this, but someone's going to have to kind of uh, be willing to uh, deal with that piece of it. And I think it should be a single point of contact. You're right. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Cool.